What is going on guys and welcome back to Touchdowns to Home Runs. My name is Bernie. Thank you for joining us today on the Touchdowns to Home Runs show. Hope that your day is going absolutely fantastic. Today we're going to be breaking down some questions that I found on a Bleacher Report article regarding the Toronto Raptors and the upcoming NBA draft. I'll be doing my best to sort of give my opinions and best answers to those questions. Um, just before we do get into the video though, if this is something that you enjoy, make sure to smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to Touchdowns to Home Runs for more content just like this. Um, but let's get right into the first question. So the first question is, if the Raptors somehow jump into the top four, who are your picks at each slot? Meaning, who do you pick? One, two, three, and four. We'll start with the number one overall pick. It's obviously got to be Cade Cunningham. Now, the Raptors have a surplus of guards, but I think regardless of positional needs, and this goes for every team, not just the Raptors, if you are drafting in the first position of this NBA draft, you take the generational talent that Cade Cunningham is. There's no other way around it. You can build around Cade Cunningham regardless of who you have on the roster. He's got length. The guys he's comparable to in the NBA is absurd. He guards multiple positions. Very, very high basketball IQ. I mean, and that's not even talking about what this kid not only did for Oklahoma State last year, but what he can do on the offensive side of the ball. He's extremely talented. Super, super high basketball IQ. Um... Number two is where it starts to get debated a little bit more, but I like Evan Mobley um, for the Raptors who really need sort of a big man, especially a center. Evan Mobley is that guy, had a tremendous year last year for USC, and what's really good about Evan Mobley is he's a great two-way player, probably the best two-way player in this NBA draft, maybe still behind Cade Cunningham, but I think he's very, very close. He's a fantastic defender and obviously very good on the offensive side of the ball as well. The only thing with Evan Mobley, he does have some effort issues. There's been some red flags over the course of his college basketball career. Um, but that being said, I don't think this will stop the Raptors from taking him number two. He's a game changer. Number three could be Jonathan Kuminga, um, but I'm going to say Jalen Green just because Jalen Green could also be debated to be at the number two position. And, you know, depending on who does end up picking two, Jalen Green definitely could go there. He's a phenomenal scorer, played last year in the G League, um, averaged just under like 20 points or something against pro players, which for his age, absolutely insane. Um, Jalen Green is one guy in this draft that can score from anywhere on the court. He's got a quick release, um, does not need a lot of space in order to score the basketball. That's what I love about Jalen Green, which means that Jonathan Kaminga, not at the number three spot, but at the number four spot, obviously makes a lot of sense for the Raptors. Um, not only does he have the experience playing at that high level in the G League as well, playing alongside Jalen Green, um, but he also fits the Raptors positional needs. Obviously, he's a big man as well um, Does a lot of things right. He's a fantastic scorer also very good on the defensive side of the ball as well um, But really really mature under the basket. I think the Raptors can do a lot with that Um, so yeah, those would be my top four picks if I am the Toronto Raptors Let's move on to question two if the Raptors end up picking eighth Do you think they go for a more solid? Immediate contributor or do you think they take a chance at a guy with more upside? Now, in my personal opinion, I've always been a big believer when it comes to the draft that you take the best guy available, especially at the number eight position. You're not really locked into having to take the Cade Cunninghams, Jalen Greens, those kind of guys of the world, right? Um, so in my opinion, to take the guy with the highest potential. Now, that being said, these two categories of potential and being an immediate contributor, I think are sort of a myth because there's a lot of guys and I think possible guys who could fall right into the Raptors range at eight that sort of fit both. And I look at a guy like Scotty Barnes, who could be an immediate bench player, sort of impact guy for the Raptors, um, but at the same time is not where he's going to be. He had a good year for Florida State, but, you know, not where his sky high potential probably is. Um, so therefore, again, we cover both for the Raptors. I think it's really important, though, for the Raptors to look not only at 2021 and the 2022 season, but like really look at who could you actually develop into a star for 2023, 2024, when you're trying to make playoff pushes in those years. Um, so a guy like Scotty Barnes, a guy who has both, um, I think is definitely an option for the Raptors at eight um, or, or right around the seven, eight range for the Raptors. Um, but yeah, I think that this question sort of is a bit of a myth. Question three, who is the best prospect not in the top five in your opinion? So if we land for say the eighth pick, who would be the best fit? Now, not the eighth pick, uh, but the best player outside the top five, in my opinion, is Keon Johnson. He's a guy I've talked about so, so much, and somebody who's ranked pretty much six on every single draft board, and rightfully so. He had a very solid year last year for Tennessee, but he has sky-high potential. Um, and I think, honestly, if the Raptors do pick him anywhere from six, seven, eight, it's honestly a win. And I think anybody who picks this kid 
outside of the top five has a really good draft. Uh, but as I was saying before, put up really good uh, numbers last year in his freshman season for Tennessee, but he hasn't even scratched the surface of what this kid can do. Um, he, he's a little sort of um, a project, I want to say, on offense, even though he did put up good numbers. I think he put up 12 points per game last year, but again, he, he's got so much more potential than that. He's an athletic Freak. This kid might be the most athletic player in the draft. He's dynamic, extremely offensively gifted, can create his own shots. And the Raptors right now might need sort of exactly what Keon Johnson brings to the table. A guy who is an offensive creator might fit perfectly um, into the Raptors bench and be an immediate impact player for the Raptors next year. And then, you know, a potential all-star later down the line, in my opinion. Next question is, what do you think the Raptors are going to do with their second round picks? Now, this is a really interesting one. The Raptors have two second round picks, but in my opinion, you keep one, trade one. Um, the Raptors obviously have had a ton of success um, scouting in the later part of the drafts um, and even you know later parts in first rounds um, when they don't have super high picks. Their scouting is phenomenal. Look at a guy like what they did with Malachi Flynn last year, right? Um, that being said, if the Raptors don't have a top four pick and can't get a Mobley or Jonathan Kuminga, and for whatever reason, you know, don't want to draft Kai Jones, whether that's, you know, somewhere near the top 10, whether that's a little further back, um, they might not be able to find their starting center in that first round. So you look at maybe trying to get a backup center in the second round, and there's a lot of options, a lot of guys who wouldn't replace a guy like Birch or Boucher, but would definitely add some more depth for the Raptors. Um, even if they don't add somebody in free agency. And I think that's really key for the Raptors. I think you take a shot at the center um, in the second round. Last question that we have today, does the Raptors drafting a guard in the top 10 affect their decisions with Lowry and Gary Trent? My simple answer to this is no, but it is a little more complicated than that. First off, unless it's Cade Cunningham, I don't really see the Raptors picking a point guard in the top 10 or a guard at all, in my opinion. Now, I've said this before, I don't really see the Raptors picking subs in the top four. I think, you know, with Mobley, Kuminga there, I think there's some better options. And I would even pick um, Jalen Green over subs. Um, Mitchell is an option. Moses Moody as another guard option is also there. But again, I don't see it. Um, if you're in the top four, you have other priorities. If you're outside of the top four, Scotty Barnes, Keon Johnson, the guys that I really would look at, um, or uh, Jones and maybe trade back a little bit. But again, I think the Raptors do have a lot of other options other than drafting a point guard that would really take Lowry or Gary Trent Jr. out of the mix. Um, Gary Trent Jr. last year, I, I really still want him at the shooting guard position this year, um, right beside Fred Van Bleet. Um, so if you're the Raptors, he was the youngest player for them last year, 22 years old. I would still pay him. I know he's going to get probably a bigger offer sheet that the Raptors have to match that maybe is a, a bit more than we were hoping for. But again, I still think he's a big core part of the future. And then on the flip side of that, Lowry, I think is really gone no matter what. And I think it's going to be a sign and trade. Masai opted not to trade him at the deadline, possibly get some more, you know, in the off season, which I think it is true because I think a team like the Lakers, especially you know, if they go out first or second round in the playoffs, I think they're possibly going to be looking to make some moves and add a guy like Kyle Lowry. Um, so even if the Raptors don't bring back Lowry, still want a veteran point guard, you have options like Dennis Schroeder, like I've spoken about in previous videos. So I don't really think so. I think the Raptors are pretty set in stone. They got a surplus of guards. I think you're fine with having Van Vliet as their starting point guard and Gary Trent Jr. as their shooting guard. So Really, regardless if the Raptors draft a, a guard or point guard or shooting guard, um, I don't really think it affects Lowry or Gary Trent Jr. too much. Um, but anyways, if you guys did make it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your comments, thoughts, and everything that I talked about today down in the comment section below. If you did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to Touchdowns to Home Runs for more content just like this. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.